I'm Edie Lash and I'm here in the Hub Pavilion in Davos, very delighted by our next guest, Rolf Hoyer, the Director General of CERN. And tell me why you've come to Davos, first of all. Well, I think Davos is a very interesting event. You meet a lot of people and I think it's very important today to, first of all, network with interesting people and secondly also to make these people aware of, the, of science and of the importance of science for daily life. So CERN has had some magnificent discoveries over the year. We, over the years, we've had um, the World Wide Web was invented when Ter Tim Berners-Lee was at CERN. You very recently made some incredible discoveries. You've, you're promising one this year. Tell me about that. Yeah, because the discovery which you mentioned from uh, last year is not yet a discovery. Okay. It's what I would call intriguing fluctuations. Okay, okay? one has to uh -huh. be very careful because things don't pop up in physics so quickly. Yeah? You, you, you need patience, you need time, and you see some fluctuations and then you get excited. Mm -hmm. And then um, what I'm promising for this year is a discovery. Mm -hmm. Because we will either discover this famous uh, Higgs boson, which one of is the elementary particles. One of the elementary particles. Which this Higgs boson is supposed to be responsible to give mass to fundamental particles. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the cornerstones of our so-called standard model, which is still missing. And we know everything about this particle, except if it exists. That's the okay. only problem. However, this year, 2012, we will either find it, prove its existence, mm -hmm. or we will exclude it, its existence. Both would be a discovery, and I expect it end of this year. And what happens if you don't discover it? Does that mean we have to completely rewrite what we know about elementary particles and physics? No, not no. completely, but okay. we have to rewrite part of it. Right. And the nice thing would be that um, we as experimentalists would most probably find within the next few years what would replace the six boson. But that we don't know yet what it would be. So how much of what you're talking about is, is in the universe and how much, because after 2012 you weren't going to move on to explaining more of the universe and tell me about that. Well, first of all, once you find something like the Higgs boson, then you also have first to prove that it's really this Higgs boson. You have to investigate its, its properties. I mean, if you find something, you have to, to study its properties mm -hmm. and that will take a long time. Mm -hmm. Because also deviations from the assumed properties can hint to new physics. Mm -hmm. and then. I mean, after all, with this standard model, we are just able to describe 4 to 5 percent of the matter and energy density of the universe. It took us 4 to 5 decades mm -hmm. to get this description. It was a fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, um, performance in physics to do that. But 96 percent are unknown. Mm. One quarter of it is dark matter, which clumps like normal matter. Three quarters is the so-called dark energy which drives the universe apart. Mm -hmm. And last year's Nobel Prize was given for the discovery of the acceleration of the, uh, uh, of the enhanced acceleration of the universe. Now, I hope that with our big collider mm -hmm. in the next few years, we will shed the first light on this dark universe. Mm -hmm. That means that we can shed some light on these 25% of uh, dark matter. We we'll see. So we would go from potentially knowing about 4% of to knowing, matter, to to knowing, knowing nearly 30 percent. That's pretty good going. That's a pretty good going. <laughs> and this is why we are excited, yeah? Very good. Well, thank you so much for stopping into the Hub Pavilion here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lash.